infantry to go forward. Hey guys, welcome back to History Saver 1941. Thank you for joining me. And as always, if you would like, please feel free to subscribe if you like what we're doing. And please share the channel with your friends. And it's been a while since I've made a World War II reenacting theme video. It's, it's been a little while since I've been able to have the chance to do that. But what is this video? And how is this video going to be World War II themed? Okay, so here's the deal. We have a pretty big event that we have scheduled for 2023 that I've been fortunate enough to have a pretty big part in. Um, and it's an event I'm looking forward to because my first World War II event I ever hosted myself and put on is at the place where we are doing this one. But what this event is, <clears throat> is it's an immersive event. It's a public immersive event. With meaning, if you guys are not into World War II reenacting, an immersive event is just what it says. It's where the reenactors immerse themselves in that World War II lifestyle for the weekend. Everything is a lot more historically correct and accurate, and you're actually getting a feel of kind of what the guys went through during World War II. So, but not only is it immersive, it's a public immersive event, which the public would get to walk in here and actually have a feeling of being immersed along with the reenactors, which is really cool and has not really been done that much. So it's going to be a very neat event. Now the event is centered around the um, 8th of October, 1944 campaign outside of Aachen in a place called Eilendorf, um, if I'm saying that right, Eilendorf Ridge which is famous for the Battle of Crucifix Hill that occurred on the 8th of October, 1944. And basically it was an action by the 18th Infantry Division of the 1st Infantry, uh, 18th Infantry Regiment of the 1st Infantry Division, the Big Red One, to uh, basically go in and secure Aachen and the city of Aachen. So Eilendorf and where the Battle of Crucifix Hill took place was actually centered outside of a German town called Haran, if I'm even saying that right. Haran, or, you know, if you're English, Haran, uh, which I'm sure is not the correct pr pronunciation. But uh, basically, that is a general rundown of what this is. And here in that area was a lot of the Volkstrom, and the 18th Infantry Regiment was tasked with fighting back the Volkstrom, which was basically ragtag soldiers of the German army. I mean, old guys, young guys, guys that had basically anything they could get their hands on. They were kind of like the, um, I guess a militia is a good sense of the word, you know, to kind of compare those guys to. They didn't have a whole lot. But for me, at this event, I'm doing 18th Infantry Regiment of the 1st Infantry Division, which is usually what I portray is the 1st Infantry Division um, at most of the reenactments I go to if I don't do German I'm um, doing U.S. 1st Infantry Division. So what this video is, is that recently we have had to come up with the uniform guidelines of, what, of which, which was expected of the 18th um, Infantry Regiment guys who's going to be reenacting here. And in doing this, I thought maybe this would be a good opportunity as well to get some of you guys that's interested in getting into reenacting, giving you a basic starter kit. Uh, for reenacting, especially if you want to do infantry. This is not just on the 1st Infantry Division, but this is the basic kit for most combat infantrymen on the front lines during World War II. So this is this kit is centered around 1944, and those years, there's, of course, all kinds of other uniforms and things that could get into the mix, but this is one of the main impressions. 1944, October, this is what you would have saw the 1st Infantry Division wearing. So uh, let's get into it. So let's start with the uniform, your shirt and your trousers, which is the most basic of any military uniform, your clothing. This event will require the M37 uniform shirt and trousers. Now these patches will have to come off, uh, this patch will, and it will be replaced because my rank is changing for this event. And I'm actually going to be portraying a first lieutenant. So I have you know, some collar insignia that will be on this shirt and this patch will come off. But the first ID patch will stay the same. You have the M37 wool shirt here. It's got the proper gas mask flout. 
And I believe this shirt come from What Price Glory it did. Uh, WhatPriceGlory.com, you can find this shirt there. And it has the matching trousers right here. And up under the matching, on the matching trousers, we have the proper <clears throat> uniform trouser belt, which you see kind of here. And I've got to do some work, it's fraying on me. Um, the tilt come off, so we really need to do some work on the belt. And the belt buckle will look like this. So it would be the black belt buckle. So this is the proper uniform for the M37 set that we will be wearing for this event. So if you're getting into reenacting, wonder what an M37 uniform set is. If you hear about it, this is it. Your wool shirt will pick. Okay, so next we will be wearing the M41 field jacket because based on most of the photographs from the 18th Infantry Regiment, 1st ID, in the area during the time, all the photographs I've noticed usually generally have these guys wearing M41 jackets, which look like this. Again, this comes from What Price Glory. And there's two types of this jacket you can get. You can get the summer or the winter. There's no difference between the two other than one's thicker, one's thinner. So make sure for this event I'm getting the winter because it's going to be cold in October. So this is the uniform jacket I'll be wearing. As far as a shoulder patch, you can, or you don't have to, put a first ID shoulder patch on this jacket. And for me, well, I'm not really decided yet, but uh, I'm probably gonna go with a blank shoulder patch on this jacket. Now, since it's going to be a cold, at, since it's going to be cold at this event, now I am going to pack an extra item that's not actually not on our list. And that is my 42 sweater. Uh, basically, this is just, as you see it, it's a sweater to help keep you warm. This comes from at the front, very high quality, very comfortable, and it just adds another layer if I need it. And what would I do with this thing until I wear it? I'll put it in my haversack, which you'll see in just a second. So now we've got all of our top portion of our uniform completed. We're going to go down to our feet. What are we going to wear for boots? So, of course, I'm going to wear some kind of period correct, um, probably wool socks, um, OD green, or something of the nature. And sometimes what I would even do, is put on a regular pair of white socks, be kind of farby, and then pull my wool socks on over that just to give me some extra uh, foot heat. And then I will be wearing my rough outs at this event. So these are your US Army rough outs. You can see these are stamped on the bottom, US Army. And these will be my shoes. Now I will actually pair these shoes with the 1938 leggings. So I will not be wearing double buckle shoes at this event or double buckle boots because I haven't seen a whole lot of evidence of it with the first division um, during that time. And from video and photo evidence, I've seen most of the guys wearing these. So this is the 1938 US Army legging, not Marine Corps. And you can find these, what price glory, World War II impressions at the front. Anybody carries these. They're a pain in the butt to get on, but they're very correct. And they actually help a whole lot when you do have them on, to me anyway, of getting bars and things like that out of the way. So that's what I'm gonna be pairing for footwear during this event. Okay, so first things first on some of the equipment that I'm going to be carrying on my person is the helmet. Now, the M1 helmet, I have two M1 helmets here. I have several helmets. Now I have one with a net, one without a net. I can wear either one of these. This net's correct for 1944 or what we're doing. This helmet is good to go as well. This is a J.M. Murray. This is an original, okay? So I'm probably going with a J.M. Murray for this event just because honestly, I like the helmet a little bit better because this one has just been beat up and um, needs some work done on it. But um, yeah, um, I'm probably going to go with this helmet is what I'm guessing, but and anyways, this is your M1 helmet with the correct liners. And this is the helmets we will be wearing during the event. Okay, so first things first, we have to have our haversack, which is the bag that goes on the back of our backs. Uh, Musette bags were not really used at this time frame. You saw a lot of airborne trippers with them, but you didn't see first ID guys with them. You mainly saw these things. This is the M1927 haversack. And as you can see on the front, we've got a couple of different components to this haversack. You have your meat pouch on the front, which if you look behind me right up here, there's my mess kit I will be using with a fork and spoon and uh, the knife on top of it and the 
leather sheaths that I ordered from at the front to help protect those. So that will be going in this pouch here. And I usually just put all the components in here, the mess kit, plus the utensils. That way they're all together. And then up underneath it, we have our shovel cover. If you can see it, there's a little bit better view. You see it there. And in that shovel cover, we're going to put our T-handle shovel in there. And this is the shovel I will be putting in this haversack for the event. Now, what do I put inside this haversack? Okay, so we're th there were certain things that a soldier packed in his haversack. Inside of mine for events like this, I always put um, certain things in mine as well. And it may not have been, you know, what they carry during the war. But it's not far be as to what I'm carrying. I always have a period sewing kit inside of this haversack. I also have a period grooming kit inside of my haversack. And I will throw a couple of other things such as an Esbit stove and some Esbit tablets that, you know, a soldier may have captured. I really like Esbit stoves because it's a good way to make a cup of coffee. And especially when you're a foxhole, it's not a lot of light coming from it. Um, so I always put that in there. I will usually put some kind of World War II period flashlight in there as well uh, because you never know when you may need one. I'll keep an undershirt, another extra wool shirt, pair of wool pants, and underwear and socks. And that is where I keep some extra, you know, uniforms and clothing items because you never know when you want to have a fresh change of clothes or you don't know what can ever happen. So I always put a little bit too much in my haversack, but it gives the haversack some weight, some shape, and then um, you're, you're good to go. Okay, so we're moving on to our belt and what we will have on our ammo belt uh, that's attached to our, you know, our waist. First thing is water, canteen, proper canteen cover. This is the proper insulated US Army canteen cover. There are several different variations of canteen covers. So you wanna make sure you're getting an OD3 or OD7 canteen cover and the proper time um, dated canteen cover for you know whatever reenactment or event you're doing. Now this canteen cover, I can already tell the buttons on this brand, it's brand new. So I've got to age this thing. I don't wanna look brand new in the field and I really need to do some work. Uh, pop these, you know, lift the dot buttons a few times you know, put them on and off to kind of get them loosened up because they're very tight. But um, I will be using my 43 original canteen along with the canteen cup that goes with this. So that would be going in here and on our um, ammo belt. Now, the other thing that we'll be carrying on our ammo belt or our web belt is our first aid kit with a proper first aid kit in it. Now, this is not the first aid kit I'm carrying. I'm carrying a different one, but it's packed up right now in my foot locker. I'll dig it out later but this is just to give you an example of a first aid kit. This is not the color or style I wanna, I wanna use. I just, for some reason, I just don't really like using this one this, that much, but um, I have another I will be using on my belt. So first aid um, kit and pouch is our other item that will be on our web belt. Now I mentioned the first aid kit. This is the first aid kit we'll, we'll be using in our web belt as well. So just to give you have a look at this one. This one is uh, pretty old, um, it's original, and I kind of need to clean this up a little bit. But um, yeah, this is uh, one I just required, and we'll be popping this thing inside of our first aid kit. Now, one very important thing you will need if you're doing this and is easily forgettable, I have forgotten this thing several times at several different events, is your bayonet. You will want the short version of your bayonet uh, that fits on the M1 Garand. And this will be mainly on my haversack. There's a little attachment on the haversack. It sits on the haversack kind of like this. And then sometimes I may actually wear it on my well belt, ammo belt, whatever, as well. So bayonet will also be going with us. All right, this is everyone's favorite piece of equipment is their weapon. This is a weapon I'm using. This is my preferred weapon. This is the weapon I love using the most. It is the M1 Garand. Now, a lot of people say, I want to use a carbine. I want to use a Thompson. I want to use, you know, this, that, and the other. This is my favorite weapon. Yes, it's heavy. It's 12 pounds. It's bulky. It, you know, it's, it's not comfortable. But this thing is awesome. I love using my Garand. It is my favorite gun ever. 
out of all the guns outside of reenacting, I still love shooting this more than I do any other gun in the own. This is my favorite rifle. So we will be using this as our rifle during an event. And this is the M1 Garand. This is a CMP M1 Garand. And this is actually, I think, one of the Philippine returns, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so this is a very cool rifle and all original. And yeah, I just love this thing. This is my favorite thing ever. Love my Garand. Okay, so we have about covered everything, but I want to cover a couple more items that we're going to be taking and thinking about. And one of those is something that a lot of people tend to forget for some reason, and that is dog tags. I always take dog tags with me, the period dog tags with the uh, little, you know, nick in the end of it. And I always carry a can opener on my dog tags because you never know when you may need one. And it's correct. Um, so... This is something I definitely will not be forgetting. And as well, I'll take different things such as language guides. Uh, this is a German language guide, some good pocket litter, and reading material when you're sitting in the hole, not doing much of these immersion events. You can constantly learn stuff. And be, to be honest, this thing is really cool to go through. I mean, there's some cool little comics and things in here. And you actually learn a lot from these things. So uh, I will be taking this, of course, to seen better days. But it's okay. It's properly aged, and it looks like I've had it in my pocket for a while because I have. And we'll just pop this in our uniform shirt pocket and then take it with us. Another thing we will be taking is our M43 jacket, which I didn't see these a whole lot, and I probably will end up leaving this thing in the car, honestly. I mean, you saw these, but you didn't see these a lot for some reason during the battle. They had them, but not a lot of guys were wearing them. They were more or less wearing the M41s from what I've seen. So we're going to take our M43 jacket, which is a warmer, you know, later variation of the jacket. It's got a lot more pockets on it. And it is actually a lot more comfortable than the M41. But I don't know how much we'll actually be using this thing. Now, one of the things we probably will not take, or we may pack it just in case, is our um, overseas cap which is basically this, this hat right here. Now, the division patch on here, unit patch um, insignia on here is not correct for what we're doing, but um, I'll take that off and I'll pack this in the pocket somewhere just in case I need it, um, maybe. But for the most case in this event, I'm going to take a Jeep cap. And I have two Jeep caps. One is from World War II Impressions and then one is from uh, Wet Price Glory. This one's a little bit more comfortable. And I will take, you know, probably both of these with me uh, because I can just easily stuff it in a, in a pocket. And if someone needs to borrow one, I have one that I can lend them. Or if I need an extra for any reason, I have it. Um, but we're probably going to be wearing Jeep caps since it's going to be cold. And they had those and we're wearing those a lot during the 8th of October, 1944. But a lot of people ask me, how do I get my stuff to the event? If I don't, you know, change or wear my stuff to the event, how do I get all my stuff? Well, I've got a Barrett's bag. Order this from World War II Impressions. Not really correct for what I'm doing here, but it's an easy and compact and really safe way to transfer all your uniforms and equipment to the event if you want to get there and then change and get into everything when you're there. Everything stays in one place during travel, and I don't have to worry about it. When I get everything out, I just throw this thing back in the car. No one ever sees it, so it's okay, but it's a good way for me to keep everything together and organized. So I highly suggest these. Um, you can get these overseas bags, you know, really cheap World War II impressions. Um, that's where I got this one. So that's what we will use to transfer all of our gear and equipment in, and get all this mess straight. There we go. So yeah, um, so that is a brief overview of just some of the things I'm taking to this event with me. And maybe that will help a new reenactor out, someone getting in reenacting, give you an idea of the basic kit that you will need. Because that's what you will need, as everything I just showed you, with the exception of your suspenders, which I forgot about, um, which is right here. Uh, just basic M1927 suspenders. So there you go. Um, I hate these things too, by the way. So there you go. That is everything I'm taking to this event for the most part. That's everything that's going to be on my person. 
Um, and yeah, so gives you an idea of what you would need if you're a new reenactor getting into the hobby, want to buy your starter kit. This is everything you need to start right here. This is it. And then you start building your impression up from there. This is your kit. Then you start building your impression, which is how you act and portray yourself around the public and as a World War II soldier. So with that being said, guys, all we have to do now is lose a little bit of poundage, get our figure back, and then we're set to go for uh, January 2023 for the battle or drive to Aachen, uh, Battle of Allendorf, Allen, Allendorf Ridge, uh, Chris Pitts Hill. There we go. So, yeah, we're, uh, we're ready to go, and we'll be uh, coming at you from that event in January of 2023. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, guys, keep preserving history. Stay safe. See you soon. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you later.